I'll tell you something that's probably close to heresy. I don't know if that's the right word or not. This is a terrible admission to make. But I have never been crazy about the song Old Man River. In fact, it makes me cringe when I hear it. It's always sung by a guy that goes, mm -hmm. And it always sounds like a car being started up on a cold morning. The songwriter and performer John Hartford grew up in St. Louis and lives in Nashville. He makes time every summer to pilot boats and play music on the river. He's a living archive of river lore and the music of the Mississippi. It's knowing that your door is always open and your path is free to walk. That makes me tend to leave my sleeping bag rolled up and stashed behind your couch. And it's knowing I'm not shackled by forgotten words and bonds and the ink stains that have dried upon some line. Keeps you in the back roads with the rivers of my memory that keeps you ever gentle on my mind. A lot of my early songs were had a lot of words in them, and the words came by in a pretty good clip, like a kind of a breakdown clip. And that, of course, that's how Gentle on My Mind came about, because it was written at a time when I was writing wordy songs. Forgiving when I walk along some railroad track and find. That you're waving from the back roads but the rivers of my memory For hours it's just gentle on my mind I don't know how I came to sound like John Harker. I think that uh, style is created by limitations and I think I do the very best I can with what little I've got and that's how it comes out and I, don't, I haven't ever tried to uh, manufacture anything I just try to just sound as good as I can and I would say that my life in music has been a, a, a steady thing of trying to teach my hands and my feet and my mouth to reproduce the sounds that I hear in my head. Now I had a teacher when I went to school. She loved the river and she taught about it too. I was a pretty bullet boy, but she called my bluff with her great big collection of steamboat stuff, oh yeah. She had logbooks and bells and the things like that And she knew the old captains and where they were at She rode the Alabama and the Gordon C. Green As the Cape Girard or she was later renamed on uh -huh. But her very favorite, as you all know, was the Golden Eagle, Captain Buck's old boat. This old stern wheeler sank and went to heaven when I was in the fourth grade in 1947. This boat that I'm on, the Twilight, is probably, I would say, the fastest boat on the Mississippi River system. It has the, certainly the finest uh, model hull of any boat on the Mississippi River system. But for that reason, though, uh, she runs like a scared rabbit in deep water. But for that reason, sometimes when the water shallows out a little bit, she's a little bit hard to steer. So you really have to you have to watch her because she's so sensitive, she'll take off on you. But the trade-off is that she's probably the fastest boat I've ever been on. I used to work real hard to get my schoolwork done Cause you couldn't fool Miss Ferris none And if I went to sleep or I wasn't supposed to talk Oh, she was a dead shot with a little piece of chalk, uh-huh Oh me, oh my, how the time does fly Time in the river keep a rolling on by Now I'm not a student and she's not a teacher But we both still love the Mississippi River uh -huh. mm -hmm. The real true music of the river is probably just about any kind of music that you can think of because there were so many different kinds of people were on the river. So uh, everybody, every uh, every class of people has their music. And of course, they take it with them wherever they go. 
Where's an old time river man go after he's passed away? Does the soul still keep a watch on the deep for the rest of the river day? Does the thing come back as a channel cap? Are the wasps light on the wheel? Or the birds that fly through a summer sky? Or the fish swimming under the keel? One of the things you have to remember is the early part of the 19th century, we didn't have, uh, we hardly had very few roads, much less highways. And so the only way that uh, culture could really get back into the backwoods was by river. And uh, there's a, early circuses had what they called boat shows. And, uh, and most of these circuses carried a uh, black-faced minstrel act with a five-string banjo and a fiddle. And, and so uh, uh, the backwoodsmen would hear, hear this music. Well, they already played fiddles in the backwoods, but uh, uh, they didn't play too many banjos. So then they'd go and they'd make Bangers out of gourds, and groundhog hides, and stuff like that, and then they'd want to sing. Uh, they'd want to sing these minstrel songs, but they couldn't hardly remember them. And what few they would remember, they'd probably get it wrong. So that would start. That would be the creation of new material right there. And then, for the rest of it, they'd take these old Elizabethan ballads, these old sad Elizabethan ballads, and they would sing them in double time. Like, for instance, they'd have a like there's a little market was sitting in her high hall door and they go do -dum 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 little market was sitting in her high hall door and then you got the, then you got what would be the ancestor music the bluegrass which is uh, generally uh, a real slow loping vocal under over a 90 mile an hour uh, rhythm section <laughs> 